I want to make sure I have everything in order, and I think we do. Okay. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Campus Fit, maintaining a healthy lifestyle while you're still in school. My name is Shadi Adu, the Savvy Life Coach, and we have a wonderful group of panelists today, so I am not going to stop. We are going to get ready and begin. The first thing that I need to do is to share my screen with you, and bear with me. Let's hope this works tonight. Okay, so we want to make sure when I share the screen that you can actually see it. Oops, wrong screen. That's Facebook. Other oh, wrong screen. Got it. Can you see my PowerPoint? I'll wait a second. And you can also see the probably the, the uh, Skype information that I'm getting also. Okay, panelists, can you see my Facebook? Yes. I mean, my PowerPoint? Yes. yes. Okay, so that means that they can probably see it also. It's yes. probably on a slight delay. Yes. I will begin. So welcome again to P Campus Fit, maintaining a healthy lifestyle while in school. A little bit about me. If you have not met me, my name is Shade Wyadu. I am an international educator, speaker, life coach, and doctoral student. And before I became all of this, I was just a struggling student that did not know what to do that had a really difficult relationship with food. And that's why I decided that we needed to have this discussion about being fit in school and maintaining a healthy lifestyle and also being a successful student. It's something that I am struggling with and I have struggled with. Prior, currently, I am a doctoral student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, getting my PhD in curriculum instruction with a concentration in multicultural education. and. Prior to this experience, I lived overseas for three years in the Republic of Kazakhstan. And it was in Kazakhstan that my relationship to food changed. I realized it wasn't just something I was supposed to be pleasuring myself with, but it was supposed to be keeping me alive and healthy. And my understanding and knowledge of food changed when I was overseas because I no longer had the access to fast food. I couldn't just go to McDonald's or Burger King and have it my way. If I wanted it my way, I had to create it from scratch. So my relationship with food changed because I didn't have the fast food. So I mean, the closest when I moved away to Kazakhstan, I lived in the city. The city had fast food. But when I moved um, oh, to the rural part of Kazakhstan, there was nothing. I mean, there were some frozen pizzas that were horrible, but there really wasn't anything that I really enjoyed, and I had, and my relationship to food had to change. I also started working out, swimming, and having accountability with co-workers who said, we're going to the gym, we're going to these classes, we're going to be fit. And it really just changed my life, and I knew coming back to America was going to be a struggle because I didn't know what was going to happen with me and my weight. When the food was not readily available, it was easy to lose weight and be healthy. But coming back to the United States and downstairs from our apartment, we had this delicious quick trip with these delicious donuts. And I really <laughs> didn't know how, and, and we have pizza and all this stuff that we can get just about 24 hours a day. And I really didn't know how my relationship with food was going to be when I got back to the U.S. When I was overseas, I did lose 30 pounds. Hooray! Um, as of today, I have gained probably 10 pounds back. Well, I lost two, so maybe I, I, I've gained about eight or nine pounds back, back and forth. But I'm at a pretty, I'm at a pretty happy weight right now. But for the summer, I like to be a little bit smaller, so I do want to lose about a little bit less than 10 pounds. But I don't want to talk anymore. This is not going to be about me tonight. I want to talk about. I want you to hear from people who have inspired me. They keep me on my toes. I knew we were doing this webinar, so I had to get back in the gym last night and on Friday. I haven't been in the gym for about a month, but I knew this was happening, so I had to have something to say. So I am inspired by our panelists. They keep me on my toes professionally, physically. They make sure, you know, if the food is not right, Shade, you going to eat that? They keep me they keep me accountable. And it's so important to hear these stories from amazing people who are doing amazing things from all across the country, mostly on the East Coast. And they're going to be talking to you. And I am going to introduce them right now. First, 
is my cousin. Her name is Kimberly Williams. She's a student at Univers uh, Keene University getting her MSW and the degree is in social work. She will be graduating in May. Kimberly, I mean, as a family member, we have had a family who has struggled with weight. And it is also developed into generations that have struggled with weight, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, you name it. It's something that our family has continuously struggled with. And I'm so happy that I have cousins that we're now so cognizant of how we need to be healthy that we're going to change that generational health problems. We're going to change that now. We're reversing it. And I'm just so happy and I'm inspired by her. She has guns, people. Do you see that? Yes. She is going hard body. I mean, if you follow her on Instagram <laughs> or on Facebook, she'll give you her, her handles. You need to see these workouts that she's doing. She makes me look real bad. I thought I was doing something until I see these CrossFit things that she's doing and I'm like, oh, I need to sit down. So I'm so happy that she decided to be on with us today, and you'll be hearing from her shortly. Next, we have Dr. Marvin Carr. Literally, while we were planning this webinar, he became Dr. Marvin Carr. He successfully defended his dissertation, I think it was on Wednesday, and we yes. had to change the flyer to Dr. Carr because I am so proud of him. Thank you. He is a student, well, no longer a student at Morgan State University getting a Ph.D. in engineering. You will hear from him. And how much weight, Marvin? I know over 150 pounds. Yeah, 154 need, pounds. This is what, and counting. And counting. Look at that. That's muscle, people. So I want it while pursuing a degree in engineering. That's no small feat, people. I, can, I don't even want to. <laughs> I'm in school, and I'm just starting trying to figure it out. But that's no small feat a small feat to get a degree in engineering and still maintain a healthy balance and a healthy lifestyle. And I'm so proud of him. And I have our Miss Shanika Hunter. Miss Shanika Hunter is a student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison with me getting her MA in Women and Gender Studies. Miss Shanika is my roommate. She is also my sorority sister and she is not playing with me. This girl is at the gym in the morning. She's at the gym at night. She's making me look bad, but she's not to my door. I said, Shade, we got to go to the gym. We, go, we didn't go in the morning. We got to go in the evening. And having someone who you live with who is around you who is changing their healthy lifestyle holds you also accountable. Because sometimes when you want to get healthy, your friends, are, they eating pizza, they eating cheeseburgers, and they're not helping you get into that mindset of being healthy. But mm. now, Ms. Shanika is not playing any reindeer games with me. And she's like, oh, Shadda, you eating pizza again today? <laughs> she will let me know, and she isn't going to hold me accountable. And, that's, and if anyone who knows me knows that I need to be held accountable for everything, because I don't want to sit here telling you guys, giving you all these suggestions, and I'm not practicing them also. And I had a couple of pictures just from the past. That was Ms. Shanika and I from last night. Marvin and I oh from our goodness. undergrad days, and yes, Kimberly, I dig this picture up. I dug it up from the ditches. We were at some <laughs> Thai restaurant, and look at us <laughs> now. And I wanted to show some. <laughs> I wanted to show some of these before and afters, and because I wanted us to be reminded, there's a place that some we don't want to go back to. And some people that are listening to this are at that place. They're like, I, I need to do something different. I want to make a change in my life. I just need to push. And I'm hoping and I'm praying that someone who's watching this webinar tonight will have, this will be their push to change their life. So now I don't want to talk anymore. I do like talking, but this is about our panel. They are amazing and fabulous, and I know you want to hear from them. There are some lovely people in the room that want to hear from our lovely panel. So I am going to stop sharing and turn it over to our panel. So you can see me. Um, I'm going to get my iPad out. Oops. And who's going to go first? Who would like to tell us first? I have my questions up, and of course, I didn't change them. So what inspired you to get fit? Who would like to talk? Or tell me, tell me, tell us about yourself. That's what I'll go with. Who would like to tell us about themselves first? You can go ahead. I guess I can go first. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, hello, everybody out there. Um, first of all, thank you, Sade, for um, uh, putting this together. Uh, I think you've always been uh, a leader and a stalwart person, you know, uh, always on the cutting edge. And so... 
Uh, you're one of my heroes, so thank you for putting this together thank for us. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so my name is Marvin Carr. Um, sorry, Dr. Marvin Carr. I am a. Um, <clears throat> I just received my um, doctor degree in engineering from Morgan State. I'm currently I work in policy. I'm off. Uh, uh, engineering, STEM education policy. Um, <clears throat> I'm from River Rouge, Michigan, um, but I've been here in Baltimore for nearly 10 years. And uh, I am a, I'm a health nut. I'm a gym rat. Uh, if you would have asked me this five years ago, um, that definitely would not have been me. Um, and so uh, that's me in a nutshell. I don't know how long, how much you want to say about ourselves, but uh, that's me in a nutshell. I'm a scholar. I'm a singer. I'm an opera singer. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I'm a health nut. So that's me in a nutshell. Marvin, there is more to your story that we want to hear. What inspired you to, to get into shape? Because it always wasn't like that. You weren't always in the gym. So what inspired you? What, what kicked you in the behind and said, you know what, I got to change my life? So I'm trying to figure out how, how to share my screen. So um, I'm going to share something with you all here. I'm going to figure out how to share my screen. There should be a button. The first, the second button to the left of your screen should be the screen share button. Okay. It's a green button. What's coming up? Um, so, can you all see? I cannot see it. There we go. Share. Got it. Okay, your screen has changed. Let's see if we can see it. I see Shanika. <laughs> I see me. Okay. Can you Something's see something? Coming up. Changing. Yes. It's changing. All right. It's coming. So can you see that? Yes. Yeah. I can see it. So uh, about, wow, nearly five years ago, I was in a horrific car accident. <laughs> and I've always been a heavy person. Um, <clears throat> all my life, I was a heavy person. Um, but this particular car accident, um, the the after effects uh, was severe depression. And at you know before the accident, I may have weighed about 350, 360, a heavy person. Um, <clears throat> but because of the injuries I faced, as you can see, the, it was a really bad accident. I was in hospital for a long time. Um, I wasn't able to be out and be active, so I spent a lot of time in the house, and I fell into deep depression. And I just ate and ate and ate. Um, one day, I was walking up the steps at school. I just cannot breathe. Just cannot breathe, and I like to fall out. And <clears throat> the very next day, I went to the um, emergency room, and the doctor said, "Mr. Carr, you have to lose weight. You have to lose weight, um, or else you'll die." Um, <clears throat> my blood pressure was was sky high. Um, I had early onset diabetes, um, and all I could think of, all I could think of at the time was my family, my mother, and so. Um, soon after that, I decided that I would, you know, get my my health together. Um, and so uh, it was important for me to. Uh, it was a, a drastic change. So one day I got up and said, Marvin, you need to lose 200 pounds. <clears throat> I said, How am I going to do that? And I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. I spoke to my mom about it. Um, and someone told me to download this app called My Fitness Pal. Uh, everyone, everyone, some some people hate My Fitness Pal, but I love it. And I downloaded my fitness pal and I just stayed consistent with it. It's a calorie tracker. And every day for the last five years, I've recorded everything I've eaten in this in this app. Um, it makes you accountable to yourself. And um and so what was important for me was uh, I could never I could no longer use me being a student as an excuse to overeat. Um because mm. uh, you know, you can you say, Well, I let um, I, I'm a student. I can't afford to eat healthy. Okay, I can't afford to eat the food that's good for me. That's not true. Um, you can eat anything you want to eat as long as you eat it um, modestly um, and in the right and in the correct proportions. And so that's what I had to learn to do. I had to learn what it means to not overeat. Um, in our community, we are taught, um, not taught, but we 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 have these lavish meals sometimes, and you eat until you can't eat anymore, right? Um, we have our children at the dinner table finishing their food until their plate is clean, even when they're hungry. And so some of those some of those um, mental notes get carried on to our adult lives, unfortunately, and we overeat. And so um, the reason I was big wasn't some culturally, you know, intuitive thing. It's because I overate. Um, once I realized that I was overeating, it was that much easier um, to uh, to lose to lose the weight. Wow, I want to make sure I get that that quote you said. You can't. 
use being a student as an excuse to overeat. What was it? Yeah. To overeat. Yeah. Man, I, me oop, I messed it up a little bit. That was powerful because yeah. for me, I know it's difficult. <laughs> I use it as an excuse not to eat properly. Mm -hmm. And I am an advocate. I think I saw you using my fitness pal first, and then I actually got the app because I knew you were using it, and it and it really did change my life when I used it consistently. So my fitness pal, and you almost had a tear coming out from my eyes. I remember when you were in that accident, we were praying for you, and you were in our hearts, and Oregon State community was thinking about you, and we just saw the transformation after that accident. I think I saw you a couple of months later, maybe maybe six months later, and I just, mm. I mean, I hugged you and I almost started crying, but I'm just, you know, <laughs> there's a purpose in your life. Things like that don't happen for, they happen hey. for a reason. I don't know, can you see my screen now? Or, yes. Or no? we can can still you see the picture there? The picture has gone off, but we, we, we saw it. I just put a new picture up. S screen share it again, because we see you. Cool. So yeah, and so um, I, I guess this is the last thing. Last thing I say, I, it's still hard um, myself. I think to see the weight loss, um, mm. and it's and it's very difficult. It's a mental. It's a mental issue actually. And um, here we go. And f you know, f for the first you know several several months, several years, I still looked in the mirror and I still saw four hundred and fifteen pounds. You know, I still, mm. and in hindsight, I look at, at pictures of myself, I'm like, oh my God, I was huge. Um, but I, you never feel huge um, until you, until you're about to die, you know, and that's where I was. And so, um, don't, 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 don't have, don't get to that point. Don't get to that point. So, so fix it before then. Mm, mm, mm. That's what I was saying. That is powerful. I know there are going to be some questions for you online, and we're going to continue. But thank you so much for sharing with us, because I know that was a powerful story. And that's why I had to have you on, because it inspired me. It inspired so many people that knew you and saw you transform after that accident. So thank you so much for sharing with us. I'm going to go next to Miss Kimberly. Let's see if I can switch it. You are on. Um, what inspired me to uh, get fit and motivated was actually our trip to Africa um, back in 2012. Um, I had to get a physical to uh, get my international so traveling to shots, know, and we know the doctor we heard went. that I had. Um, Kimberly, explain it. We went we, to what, Ghana. What we um, mm -hmm. Oh, we were bringing. Um, books and um, school materials to a school there. Um, had a little fun and pleasure at the same time. Um, we stayed for two weeks. Uh, we went to Turkey and uh, had a, an amazing time. Kumasi, Ghana and Accra, Ghana. But um, that trip um, was the catalyst behind me getting my act together, surrounding myself around people who are fit, who are in the gym, eating healthy. And so my doctor said that he heard a um, heart murmur. And I said, that explains why I was having really bad chest pain at the age of 25 years old. I said, I'm not going to have a heart attack. I'm not going to be on any type of medication. So as of last year, February, I got myself together. And I said, you know what? I'm going to lose about 10 pounds first. I started real small. And I said, I was going to try to fit in this little black dress for my 27th birthday. And um, I uh, got into the dress, and I just became somewhat addicted to it. And I loved the change that I was seeing. And at the time, I weighed about 224. Hello, Kim, we're losing I you. I cannot believe that. Just look back at What would you say? We got, okay, we can hear you now. Okay, I said um, back in February, I was at 200, last year, 224 pounds. And I lost about 46 pounds now, which will bring me about to 178. And I use a lot of uh, support, uh, people who work out, 
people who will hold me accountable, who will send me uh, text messages and phone calls. Where are you? Are you at the gym? Get down and do 25 push-ups and anything else to keep me moving. Um, I joined a gym, LA Fitness, but then grad school kicked in. Um, I'm in grad school from Masters in Social Work, which calls for internship hours. I'm a full-time teacher, and so I had to find a creative way to work, to go to school, to do my 1,200 hours, and work out. So that meant uh, sleep for about four or five hours, which I know was probably not healthy, but I was still that been during the day, so it's not all that bad. You're going in and out, Kim. Exactly. And um, it, it's been an interesting journey thus far. Okay, we can hear you. Okay. Thank you so much, Miss Kimberly. We're going to go to our next panelist, Ms. Shanika Hunter. And, okay, we can see you, Shanika. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Shanika. Um, so I'm going to start off with, um, well, one, I am, as Shade said, I'm a grad student here at UW-Madison. Um, and with that, I'm also a teaching assistant. So what inspired me to work out? Well, first I want to say that I am a huge snack eater. Like I love candy, I, I love chips, I love all that. And I still love it even though I work out. But it was to the point before that I ate candy every day, multiple times a day. Um, chips, all that, just it was, it was really bad. Um, and so it got to the point where um, people were telling me, specifically my boyfriend, that Shanika, your cheeks are getting a little bit bigger. I think you're gaining weight. And as soon as you hear gaining weight, like something kind of goes off in your mind, like how do I really look? Because in the mirror, I, I think I look okay. My clothes may be a little tight, but I think I'm still cute. So, <laughs> um, so for me, it, it really came down to do you want to be healthy? Because I didn't feel healthy. Um, I get a lot of breakouts um, and things like that. And so I didn't feel healthy. I didn't feel cleansed or anything. And so with grad school, it's really difficult. Um, so I started working out, I want to say, about two months ago. Um, it's been a little bit over two months. And I've been in the gym every day. It was at first for the first couple weeks, seven days a week, two times a day. Um, so I was, I was really, really going hard. I've cut back a little bit now, um, but it's going to get back to that two times a day um, routine. But with grad school, it's hard because I have to be in lecture Mondays and Wednesdays um, very early in the morning. I have class um, for the rest of the week. So what does that mean? That means I get up early in the morning, usually around 6 or 7, and I go work out for about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how much time I have. And then at night, before I go to bed, around 8 or 9, I go back to the gym for the same amount of time. Um, so it's really, for me, it's about staying consistent. Um, trust me, it's, it's been hard some days <laughs> when I woke up in the morning and I'm tired, my body's aching. I know I have, you know, about three hours before I have to be in class, and it's like, do I want to lay in bed for another hour or should I still get up and go to the gym? And you really have to make those decisions to say, well, who are you doing this for? How do you want to look? And I, and I usually end up getting up, you know, dragging my feet. I'm upset. Like, I'm just going to go. <laughs> but it's, it's really about, it's really a self journey. Um, but it's a good journey. I, I always, when I tell people about working out, even though I haven't been working out that long, is, to, to have fun. I mean, people kind of get really caught up in when you're working out, oh, I can't eat this, or oh, I can't do this, or um, wh why I'm working out. But you really can, um, as Marvin was saying, it's really all about moderation. You, you don't want to overeat, but I mean, if you, if you enjoy candy or snacks, you can still eat that maybe like once a week or like every other week. But it's, it's really about how you apply yourself. If you're eating like a whole bag, then that's not really going to be helping you. Um, but if you just take a little portion out, then that's fine. Um, but it, it's really about you. And I, I, I try to really have fun while I'm working out. Like me and Shade were in the gym the other day, and I'm listening to my music on the treadmill, dancing and running. It's really a fun thing. Like So 
I try to encourage people, have fun while you're working out. Like, don't make it seem like it's something that's like, oh, I have to do this. If you make it seem like that, then you probably won't enjoy it, and you won't want to, like, stay with it. But really try to have fun. That's what I do. Thank you. Excellent. Now I'm just going to ask a bunch of questions and leave it open to the entire panel. Now, if you guys, the people who are also on this webinar with us, if you have any questions, for our panel, please feel free to put them in the chat box, and I will be looking at the chat box throughout the night, and we'll be answering your questions. The first question that I have, how do you prioritize your work, your school life, your family, fitness, everything? How do you prioritize that? Anyone? Deadlines. <laughs> Whichever one has the closest deadline, that's most important. <laughs> As far as work and school, that kind of gets squeezing on the weekends because <laughs> I'm, I'm not even home Monday through Friday during the day, even at night. So Private. that's kind of how I balance. So prioritizing by, by deciding which one needs to be done now. For me, it kind of fluctuates. Um, it's really based on what is due that week. If I have a long line of students who I have to meet with, I have to make my schedule around that, meaning it may mean I have to wake up an hour earlier than when I'm already waking up um, or go to the gym at night if I can't get up super, super early in the morning. So it's really kind of like a bi-weekly thing. What about you, Marvin? How do you decide? Because I know that was one question I asked you before I got to grad school, maybe like the first week. I was like, how do you do all of this? Because I couldn't well, figure it out. And it's easy when you I, I categorize things, right? And so um, I call them the four points of the diamond, right? Um, and so the first part, um, it's about being holistic. And so um, I always prioritize the spiritual, um, um, the spiritual need and the holistic personal needs. And so it sounds bad, but I put God and myself first. That makes sense. Um, so my health, um, my needs um, personally, um, and my spiritual needs, I put first. Um, and then my family and friends, right? And so uh, if you do that, and then next, my education, scholarship, and then finally, my social life um, and my work. And that way, if you prioritize and have this hierarchy, everything has a hierarchy of needs, right? Um, uh, it's very easy to choose what and what not to do if you always have the same hierarchy of what's important in your life. Right. Um, and so the things at work or the things in your social life that may bother you at the end of the day, um, they have low priority. And so it's OK to just say, forget it sometimes. Um, but it's not as easy to do that with yourself, your God and your family. And so um, I always prioritize things like that. Wonderful. Wonderful. My next question that I have is, what is your biggest temptation? Your biggest temptation. I'll tell you mine. Pizza. Pizza! <laughs> I love pizza. But I have given it up for Lent. I have not had pizza. When can I have pizza again? Someone tell me. One of the saints on this line, tell me when I can have pizza again. When is the 40 days up? <laughs> well, I usually, I'll, I, I, I know the 48 days are, are, are up prior to Easter. But I like to, I'll have pizza on, I think, what is that, April 5th, April 6th? Something like that. I got a month left. I love yeah. pizza. I gave up pizza and donuts for Lent. But my alternatives to pizza, because I didn't have delicious pizza in Kazakhstan, was cauliflower crusted pizza. It tastes pretty good. And I haven't gotten into actually making cauliflower crust pizza since I've been in, in the U.S. It takes time, but it satisfies my cravings. So uh -huh. my... I, I do have temptations like that, and I and I used to like ice cream, so I'll just do smoothies instead. Or you can do peanut butter ice cream. What is it? You freeze um, a, a banana, and you mix it with peanut butter, and it is delicious. So when I wanted, when I craved ice cream, I would just you do the peanut butter banana ice cream. So there's still alternatives. I feel like you shouldn't sacrifice everything. You just have to make the things that you want a little bit healthier. So that's what my temptation is. What about you guys? My temptation is butter pecan ice cream. Ooh, butter pecan. Oh. 
I so like, I feel like to do, I probably do it maybe once a month. Lord, don't don't say this. Don't tell nobody that I said this. I get a nice thing of Edie's butter pecan ice cream, and I get Oreo cookies, and I crunch the Oreo cookies up inside the butter pecan ice cream, and I mix it together. <laughs> at least I do I do at least once a month. However, and this is important, you can eat whatever you want to eat as long as you burn it off afterwards. You can eat you can eat a thousand calories on top of your, your daily uh, regimen, but you need to go into the gym and burn a thousand calories off on the trip machine trip machine. That's what I do. So on those days I run an extra four or five miles. Oh uh, or jog, I don't know. To burn off, literally, that thing is about 700, 800 calories. Mm. That's about five miles running. So, I pay the Ooh. call. So, five miles, and you can have that Oreos and butter pecan ice cream. Ooh. Goodness gracious. My, my, um, my weekly is um, fried Oreos from this restaurant in Harlem. <laughs> and it's absolutely amazing. And um, I'll have that maybe like twice a year. <laughs> it is so good. It's absolutely so good. It's delicious. Fried Oreos. Oh, that's a Jersey thing. <laughs> we like to deep fry everything. Well, that's a South thing too. What about you, Shanika? It, it will bless you. <laughs> it will bless you. <laughs> um, right. My... My weakness is, as I said, snacks, but specifically candy. Over the past two months, I haven't had any candy. I've been doing pretty good, but it's really hard when you go into stores or when there are events and you see like these little temptations and you're, I'm tempted to go over there and grab a bag of Skittles or grab some Starburst or something, but um, I kind of compromise with, I usually make smoothies like at least once a day or a couple times a week. Um, and I put fruit in there with um, yogurt and water. And every now and then I also have like some fruit snacks, but I haven't had any candy, so I'm doing pretty good, but that's my weakness. Excellent. We have a question from our chat box, and they would like to know from Janice. Hi, Janice. They will, uh, Janice would like to know, has anyone tried Weight Watchers or any group, um, I guess, weight loss programs? I haven't. I just did my own thing. Just uh, I meal plan. Um, um, because my schedule is so crazy, I can't cook every single day. So, for example, like tonight, um, I'll get some chicken, some brown rice, and some vegetables, and I'll cook it for the entire week. And I'll just kind of uh, portion control it that way for lunch and for dinner. Um, for breakfast, because I'm a teacher, um, we have food at my school, so it's um, as far as the choices, it's pretty you know decent. Um, but fruit, a protein shake in the morning, and then I'll just carry my, my lunch and my dinner with me because I'm constantly on the go. I leave work, I go straight to my internship. I leave work, I go straight to class. So I need to have my food with me. Um, so that's how I, I kind of do my portion control. So keeping it. I saw someone else, I think it was also Janice, who talked about portion control. So And, and people love this butter pecan and the Oreos. So those are definitely a hit and our major temptations for everyone that's listening. So what advice would you give to people who are listening? Um, I know there are some people who are not in graduate school, some people who are also thinking about it, who will be listening to the replay or the live web stream. What advice would you give them about going to graduate school? It's, it's really up to the individual. And it's, well, what you say about going to graduate school, do you mean about like just going to graduate school in general or about going in, to graduate school and working out? In general. In general. It can be I about mean, specifically about working out or in general. I mean, I think, I, I, I don't know, for, for me personally, this is my first year in graduate school. And I enjoy graduate school more than I enjoy undergrad, um, which is really, you know, interesting I found because I've always heard, you know, graduate, gra graduate school is very, very challenging, but I like it more. I, I find that there is a lot more um, freedom and flexibility, um, but my schedule is still hectic. Um, 
as I talked about a little bit earlier with working out, but I think it's really up to the individual. I mean, if you if you really want to go to graduate school, you definitely can do it. Um, I would recommend it. Um, but it's really about what what you want um, and how that will fit into your lifestyle. Excellent. What do you guys have to say about school? Me? Um, it depends on that particular program. Um, because certain programs will require different, you know, things from you. And as far as like, I want to speak about my social work uh, program. It's classes and an internship. So if your job is not as flexible with, you know, hours and things of that nature, then that program may not be for you. Um, also depends on if there are online classes offered. That'll help too. Um, that's for the more disciplined students um, to get in front of a computer and get their degree that way. But again, like she said, it depends on the individual um, and, and the program. Individual and program. Excellent. We have a couple of questions from the audience. One question is from Rania. I hope I am saying your name right. Do you actually have to eat three meals a day? Or do you do, some people I know do five to six meals. How many meals a day do you, per day do you eat? I just responded to that one in the chat. I said about four to five. Um, and that, that five. includes like the snacks in between, mm -hmm. um, like uh, some nuts or granola bar or a shake or something like that um, because I kind of conditioned my metabolism to eat about every three to four hours. So I need to have something. Like my stomach will start growling. So um, definitely it helps to jumpstart your metabolism by eating four to five meals a day um, and to have them with you. Carry them in your purse, in your pocket, a banana, a piece of fruit or something um, to hold you over in between like your breakfast and lunch and then lunch and dinner. Excellent. People think that by not, by not eating, it's healthy. It's okay because you're losing weight that way. And that's the complete opposite. It's better for you to eat. It's better for you to keep that metabolism going. Because when you stop eating, your body goes into survival mode and it holds on to every ounce of food that you had. And then when you decide to eat, it will just hold on to that because it thinks as though you're not going to feed it again. So when you eat, it burns off that, that uh, the metabolism burns the food off. And if you eat again shortly thereafter, it keeps burning, it keeps burning. But then when you add on top of that, the exercise piece, you just, you're bound to lose a couple of pounds. Excellent. Hey. What about you? Okay, Marvin, what about you? How many meals per day do you eat? Um, not enough. <laughs> um, especially lately. Mm -hmm. um, but I probably eat four meals a day. Um, and the thing, and I, I agree with what um, uh, the previous young lady said, in that you eat a lot to you eat, you eat more times during the day so that you're not hungry, right? Right. You, you if you if you plan to eat when you're if you plan to eat four times a day, five times a day, um, and you know, you won't get up and go get a bag of chips at you know two o'clock when you're at work. Um, a bag of Doritos, right? But if you had planned the day the day before the or that morning to eat around that time, you might have an apple on hand instead. Does that make sense? Um, and so not only that, you know, and it's important to eat breakfast every day, right? Every day, I have a cup of oatmeal every day. Um, I work out in the morning, and so it's 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 important. So you want to get that get your metabolism going, and you want to support your body and, and, and your brain functionings and your body functions um, as early as possible. So okay. you gotta eat. What about you, Miss Shanika? How many times per day do you try to eat? <clears throat> um, I eat probably around the same as um, what the other panelists said about maybe four to five. Um. Breakfast has been really hard for me because I take forever to get ready in the morning. So usually, as you know, I'm running out of here with 10 minutes to get where I need to go. <laughs> so that is not enough time for me to make breakfast. And so what I've been doing is is I'll either make smoothies and I'll drink them really fast in the morning or um, I'll grab like a quick breakfast. And I'm usually eating that while I'm in lecture. <laughs> Um, but I, I have to at least get something in my body in the morning um, because I know that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. 
Um, so I really try to have something in my body in the morning and then throughout the day um, I'm usually eating. But I, I agree with what everyone else said. I don't think it's a good idea to skip meals. Um, definitely keep your body nourished um, with good nutrients. Um, try to eat, if you can, you know, a lunch and a dinner. Um, if you want like a little snack in the middle of the day, you know, have that. Don't feel guilty about it. And if you want another snack before bed, don't feel guilty about that either. Um, as Marvin said, if you have a day that is kind of bad, work it out in the gym the next day and you'll be just fine. So. Okay. How much? I don't know. Sometimes, honestly, my eating habits are horrible. It may be two times. Sometimes it might be a little bit more than that. Two to three. Before it was the five to six. And when I was consistent, it really, it really was helpful. I'm getting better this week. It's a, like I but said, it's honestly, a there, there's no secret to losing weight yeah. whatsoever. You just have to get up, exercise, and eat right, and surround yourself with good food. When you have that junk food in the house, and like Shanika said, you're rushing. Oh, let me pick up this uh, piece of chocolate. Let me pick up this uh, uh, bag of chips or whatever cookies and and ice cream and all those other things. So when you have that in your pantry, you have that in your refrigerator, sodas and juices and things, you're going to pick that up. But when you go to the grocery store with your grocery list, making a conscious effort to say, you know what, I'm going to get some water, I'm going to get some fresh fruit, I'm going to get you know whole grains and things like that, you're bound for success. So, and, you know, alleviate the fast food restaurants and going out to eat all of the time. I mean, it's okay to go out to eat, but just, like I said, make a conscious effort and saying I'm going to have this fish and this vegetable as opposed to this pasta and this fried whatever. And, uh, you know, and also alcohol too. I choose not uh -oh. to drink my calories. I like to eat my calories. So um, if I'm going to, if I'm going to in indulge, I'm going to eat something. And so drinking is not conducive to losing weight and working out. So that's another tip too. I oh, like good. the sound of that. Uh-oh, Marvin, I think we're going to hear something about this eating eating your calories versus drinking your calories. Marvin's face is like, Sunday. Mm. This is this is this is new craze among young black professionals, black yuppies, for these Sunday brunches. And these oh. uh, I went today to a, um to a brunch. I got invited by some friends. And before I knew it, I didn't have five mimosas. Right? That's 500 calories, but before you even drink anything, you know. But I had already ran seven miles, so I was good. Kimberly, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we have to be cognizant of what we drink. Like, I drink water and tequila. <laughs> My tequila, I chase it with tonic because that's <laughs> Small amount of calories. I'm serious. <laughs> you have to be cognizant of, of what you're you're this. About. You cannot eat your drink your calories. I'm telling you. Don't drink your calories. <laughs> and so after a while, my my mimosas don't become mimosas. So after the second mimosa, I said, just give me champagne. You're saving calories. Well, mm -hmm. that's a good tip. I don't drink <laughs> alcohol, but there are calories in alcohol, and some people are gaining a lot of their weight from alcohol and it does you know people do unwind in graduate school and even an undergrad with a little drink I know bottles up because we're not drinking that tap water. <laughs> I there is another question about um, what was it fasting Julian wants to know does anyone intermittently fast I just fast from things that I'm not supposed to eat like donuts pizza fruit snacks. I, I, I am intentional about specific things. But as far as not eating food, I try hey, not to do that. Julian, mean like going a full day of... Uh, um, I like, am not exactly sure. Like before sunrise and sunset? That type if, of fast? If you would like be to in, I would be break. hurting. <laughs> if he can um, elaborate, please elaborate on the question and we can definitely come back to it. We briefly touched on breakfast. I am not a breakfast eater. When I go to IHOP, I get a cheeseburger. So what do you guys 
do for breakfast. I know Marvin said he eats oatmeal. I had to learn how to eat oatmeal again. I, I do pretty much eat oatmeal every single morning with banana and cinnamon. And I, I, I pretty much do eat oatmeal every day. I might switch it with a little bit of cereal, but I do I am consistent with oatmeal now. But what do you guys eat for breakfast? I'll boil some eggs. Um, and put a little uh, Himalayan sea salt and uh, black pepper and just eat them into water. So we water. got some eggs, and, and, I know, and I know Shanika said up, um, she talked about the smoothies, and I do do smoothies in the morning too. And Julian, now he's saying, oh, cutting off your last meal at 4 p.m. I'm not doing that, Julian. My, my, my dinner is still cooking as we speak. <laughs> I can't do that either. I'm usually not even back here, like back home. I'm to cut off my meal. <laughs> no. Who has time for that? From 4 to 10 o'clock, I'm not cutting off at 4 o'clock. <laughs> I bring my dinner with me and I'm eating the class. I know. One class gets out at like 7. Julian, Mine that is it. not realistic for our time, for our schedules. 4 p.m. cut off. Maybe at 8 p.m. cut off, but 4 p.m. is a little bit unrealistic. Yeah. <laughs> what Eight, I can do. Eight, yeah, I eight, I, maybe. Not tonight, but because <laughs> the food is in the oven. Um, and tonight, since everybody is talking about healthy, it'll be boneless chicken, probably with, with broccoli. I like that. Boneless chicken with a broccoli stir fry kind of thing. I like that. Um, so I have a couple of more questions. What is your favorite song to exercise to? Destiny's Child Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why I said it is I know it's an old song, but anytime I know when I first started working out, if I was on the treadmill and I was just like, I cannot finish this mile, I would turn on my Destiny's Child. I'm like, they're going to help me get through this this mile that I got to finish. <laughs> I'm a survivor. I like that. What else? I know we're, it's like we're kind of breaking up a little bit, but what other songs does our panelists like to listen to when we are at the gym? Mm, Actually, huh. I let Pandora pick my songs. What station? Um, actually, I'm more of like an R&B when I'm working out. So, like, I'll have D'Angelo, the neo soul, going. What? I'm kind of mellow when I work out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like, you know. Oh, Although I, need I have some videos on Instagram, on Instagram, <laughs> of the uh, dancing instead of working out. Um, I worked out with a friend of mine who had some music playing on his iPod. And that's another thing. Work out with people who want to work out. Um, song or songs. Work that's out with people who want to work out. So, Dr. Carl, what are you listening to? What's on your iPad? Your iPod? So, or your iPhone? I don't listen to music when I run when I work out. What are you doing? Reading? <laughs> listen to audiobooks. Audio Got it. Okay, because I was going to ask that next question. Do you study I don't have at the I don't gym? Have, I didn't have time over the last four four years to do casual reading, right? Mm. And so I would listen to the books I wanted to read that weren't academics. That's the only time I was able, I was able to do non-academic reading was listening, if that makes any sense. So like buy, buy the audio books like Colin Powell's biography or Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, so I would, I would listen to the audio books while I worked out. Awesome! But I have done that, late, but now. I'm about to say this. Um, sometimes when you're working out, I listen to her all the time. But when Beyonce's oh. Blow comes on, you can't help but but, but rock out to it. So. <laughs> Yes, I listen to Beyonce. I need the ratch. I also like what is that? Fancy Swiss Beats and Drake. I like oh, that yeah. song. And uh, Beautiful People. Those are anything Beyonce, some Drake and Beautiful and uh, Fancy. They get me and in happy. my zone. Happy just makes you. Hmm. I'll add that to the list. And Techie, well, Julian said Big Sean. I ain't messing with you. That's what he listens to in um in the gym. Right. Chew. I know. Next time I'm gonna have to get some music on these webinars. I keep forgetting. The first one we have music. Techie, where's the music? 
Um, <laughs> where is our music, Julian? So, do does anybody else actually study while they're in the gym? I, I've done that before, but I have not done it recently. No. I need to focus on either gym or studying. I can't do both at the same time. One strategy that got me studying, I, I'm sorry, Shanika, uh, was... We well, I think we both do it. Watching ratchet television <laughs> while we're at the gym. Study <laughs> or at the gym. Well, at the gym. So it'll, you know, got to get that loving hip hop in. You just watch it while you're at the gym. It's already sucking your brain cells out. So you might as well watch it while you're working out. It'll distract you from the gym. Shanika, what are we gonna say? Um, sometimes I do work um, at the gym, but I don't do it if I'm like, of course, running or if I'm on the elliptical. Mm. I'm usually biking, and I'll just take a book down there and bike while I'm reading. Mm. That's it's not too hard. So I just hold the book, and your your legs are moving. So that's pretty easy. Yes. Um, but I like doing that. It keeps me um, distracted, and I get my work done. So. The next question that I have. What sacrifices have you guys had to make? Whether that is health wise <laughs> or school wise? <sighs> I had to um, pretty much wipe out my social calendar. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Like, I had reserved to the weekends. I have self care where I get massages done. Manicure, Ooh. pedicure, getting my hair done, just because I can't get it done Monday through Friday. Um, I used to sing in the choir at my church. Um, can't make choir rehearsals, can't sing different churches, can't do a lot of things because of work and school and my internship took a lot of my time. That's pretty much what I had to sacrifice. But I still go to church, though, but I just can't participate in all of the things. And even uh, Greek life, I can't fully participate because of everything that's going on. But I'm done in May. That is Woo! the goal. What have you guys had to sacrifice? And we'll get back to the Greek life question. What else <laughs> have you guys had to sacrifice? Sleep. <laughs> oh, sleep, yes. Yes. Sleep. Team no sleep. Team no Team sleep. No sleep. Team no sleep, definitely. Like, getting up early in the morning... Um, and so we're still going to bed late at night. I'm up right again the next morning early. So definitely sacrificing sleep. But the thing about sleep is very interesting is um, once you start working out for a while, you, you kind of train your body to wake up at a certain time. Because even now, sometimes on the weekend when I don't even use my alarm clock, I'm still up early in the morning. Um, so it's, it's really interesting. So even though sometimes I'm still tired, um, I'm really training my body to get up earlier and earlier, which is good because I get more done. So it's, it's yes. pros and cons to that. Excellent. So sleep. Marvin, what have you had to sacrifice? Um, you know, I can't really say. I just do a good job of prioritizing. Mm. I don't know if I have to sacrifice anything. I'm gonna think. I've been thinking the whole time, though. You know what? I have sacrificed something, and I'm not to get mushy, mushy on you, but I just haven't been in any kinds of uh, non-academic, non-friendship relationships in quite some time, because that's just very, very low on my priority list for now. Mm. So. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. That is another topic for another week. For another I, day. Another day. That is actually we're going to be talking about some of that kind of stuff next week for our next week's webinar. So stay tuned and if you want to talk about a little bit of relationship stuff. That mm -hmm. title, we're going to get to that in a couple. I have one more question for you guys. Everyone on this webinar tonight is in a historically black Greek letter organization. How do you balance that life? Being in a fraternity or a sorority, being a graduate student, Hey. Working, doing all of these things. Everybody's <laughs> doing their signs. I, y'all know who I roll with. Oh. How do you balance that life? Because for me, since I've been back, it's been really difficult. Um, I do serve on a national committee. I'm able to do that virtually, 
but I haven't been able to be as active in the local chapter. So how do you guys manage that? I'm financial. I got my card here somewhere. I always say <laughs> financial. It's on my card somewhere. somewhere. But how do you guys manage that? Oh, right here. Don't look at my ID. I got it. I got my financial card. Um, but how do you guys manage that life? That aspect of your life. I stay connected uh, electronically. Um, mm. I reach out to my chapter president and as well as um, public relations chair because um, I take a lot of pictures. So pictures that they need and that I have in my um, that I have saved, like they'll reach out to me and I'll do what I can behind the scenes. I don't necessarily have to be there all of the time. Um, we're putting together, for example, like our chapter directory, and my you know my president wanted you know um, headshots of everyone. So I, you know, I try to attend chapter meetings, but it's part of like events and um, things during the week. Uh, different committees have different meetings. I can't be a part of it, but wherever I can, whenever I can, I'll send an email, shoot an email, and that's how I keep connected and still, you know, take care of Delta business um, in my local chapter. Excellent. Dr. Carr, you got to speak on this. Are you still, what are you doing? National boards, you at this meeting, organizing this conference, that conference. Yeah. I'll be like, I don't know how to keep up with this man. I don't know. So I'm very, 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 I'm a noob. Um, so I'm a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Um, and I'm very, very active in my frat. And um, I'm active because you sometimes you have to just roll up your sleeves because no one else is going to do the work. Um and it, it is that that's that's just not for, that's not fraternity life. That's in life in life period. Um, and I'm active because it's been easy to do to stay active because I love it, right? I not only love my love the frat, but I love what I do in the frat, which is leadership development, mm -hmm. and training young people, and training brothers to being leaders. Um, and so because I found my niche in Kappa, um, just like I found my niche in research and scholarship. Um, it's easier to do well and to stay committed um, when you have purpose, right? Um, you have to have purpose in, in something, right? And so I have purpose in CAP. I have purpose in school. I have purpose in life. And so if you just remember that purpose and stay on that, um, commitment comes easy. Well, not easy. Whoa! Those were a lot of tweetables. Purpose and finding your niche. <laughs> Goodness gracious, Marvin. Those are some other topics for other days. I am so thankful for you guys. Oh, Shanika, what do we do? What do we try to do? Well, I am a part of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Inn, Incorporated. Yep. Um, <laughs> so what I do um, to stay close or kind of close to the local chapter here, well, first of all, um, the local chapter here for us is about two hours away. So it's very hard for us to get to all the meetings, and so usually what we do is we try to be on um, tra uh, chats through like Google Hangouts while they're at meetings, or um, we like to stay in touch with them electronically. Um, so that's what we've been doing so far um, as a graduate student who is a part of Greek life to kind of stay in touch. Um, sometimes it can get difficult, but we do what we can definitely to stay um, in contact with other sorors. Excellent. Um, we're going to, it is 8 o'clock, and you guys have been absolutely amazing. I'm going to, hopefully you can see my screen before this thing starts acting up. Um, uh, I have my little vision board. I made this last week. Can you see it? Ooh, let's see if you can see it before I talk. Excellent. So, yes. last week we had the, the webinar about how, vision boards made easy. That was the name of the webinar, and I made this health and fitness webinar, uh, vision board just for this webinar, eating clean, and I have this goal of eventually doing this 5K and maybe marathon or half marathon for my 30th birthday, so you guys hold me accountable, and some things to keep me fit and happy and reminders of this commitment that I'm making to myself. Does anyone else like to make vision boards? Yay, say yay. No? Yes? Actually, I have okay. one in progress. Awesome. I'm well, this is adding to mine. I, this is actually, I started mine with my last I, I made this one um, on using a cork board because once, especially with your health and fitness, or even you can use this for a travel board, your goals change. 
When you lose weight or you gain muscle, your health goals will change. So if you have a cork board, you can just take things on and off as your goals change. So, so you know, you're amazing. Who would have thought to have done that? Tell yeah, I, you I glued guys, mine if you, if you missed the vision board made easy webinar last week, you can get the, the link. I'll try to find it and send it out, and you can watch the entire webinar on how to make vision boards and five different options of how to do those. And my key to that, the reason I'm bringing that up, you may see it in the pop-ins. I want to invite, I'm going to try to share my screen again. I want to invite everyone. I know we got some people on from all over the place, from Chicago, Wisconsin, Baltimore, Jersey. Can you see my screen? I saw Washington. DC. We got yes. people from all over the place. But I want to personally invite you. We're doing this webinar series to build more momentum up for this vision board slash networking event that I'm having in Maplewood, New Jersey. Yes, Shade Adu is coming back to the East Coast to yes. host the first live event. I am so excited. We are trying to build momentum for it. It is on Eventbrite. You can, the investment is only $25. That comes with refreshments. And you already know that we like to eat, so it's not going to just be some chips and dip. It's going to be a little bit more than that. You're going to get your vision board, and you're going to get some empowerment. What else I got to miss? Any other questions and answers? If you have any questions about that, if you're able to make it to the webinar, um, to the vision board party, let me know, and we'll get you a ticket. It is going to be a Amazing, because I am going to show up and show out, and I want everyone there to be empowered and have a great time. And I just don't want it to be an event. Oops, stop. I don't want it to be an event where we come together and we just make vision boards and we hang out. We can't have mimosas. The place can't, does not allow alcohol, but I wasn't going to have none anyway. But it's not going to just be a pl an event where we can just hang out and talk. I want us to learn how to start making boards where they actually are accountable action, where we make the things that we want to see in our lives happen. We want to, we want to make vision boards with a purpose. We have a passion, and there's so, there's so many amazing things that the people on this webinar are doing, and we want these things to happen. If your vision is about getting in shape, and this is about health and fitness, it's not about being on a diet. None of us said the word diet this entire webinar. These are about lifestyle changes, making your life, changing your life and being committed to living a new lifestyle. It's not going to be easy. It's not always going to be fun, but at the end of the day, it's always going to be worth it. So I want people to come to this webinar, come to this vision board party and have an amazing time. And I cannot wait to see you because I'm so excited. We have so much under our sleeves. Me and Techie, we always plotting of what we're going to do to be over the top for this vision board experience. It's not just a party. It, it is not just a party. It is an experience. I want you to come, and I want something to be changed in your life. So I'm so excited. If you can join us, tell your friends, tell the Deltas, tell the Kappas, tell the SG Rolls, the Zetas. We are having the Iotas, the, the Alphas, everybody. Tell the, the, the Divine Nine, tell the Multicultural Greeks, tell everybody. I was at a workshop. Tell the bros, everybody. I was at a workshop yesterday for um, a facilitating multicultural Greek council and paying hell. So Marvin, holler at me if the Kappas need some leadership training. I'm, I'm down to go. Um, so please invite people. Let them know if you know people in New Jersey. Please inspire and invite them to come. Next week, I know I said a lot. You will get the recording. I'm holding this all outside it. I'll let it go. I'll put it down. Next week, our next webinar is titled, Can Women Have It All? Can we have the relationship? Can we be in school? Can we have the job that we love? Can we start our businesses? Can we do all of the things that we want to do and be happy with it all and balance it? So we're going to have another group of panelists next week. I am so excited because it's going to be girl talk and no holes barred, no filter next week. So come back and enjoy us. Same time, same location on March 15th, Can Women Have It All, Maintaining the Work-Life, Family-Life Balance. We're going to have, I wanted, we're going to have a, a variety of panelists, some single, some engaged, some married with children. So I wanted to get a diverse group, and, and I think almost everyone is starting a business or in school or working full-time. 
So everyone has an amazing story, and I can't wait to share that with you next week. Before we go, is there anything else our panelists would like to say? How can we reach out to you? I'll start with Kim, and then I'll go to Marvin, then Shanika. How can the people watching this, because some people are going to see this on the replay, how can we find you to see you, you know, strutting your stuff in the gym? How can we stay connected to you? And let um, us you know what's going on You can find me on Instagram. Oh, okay. Um, on Instagram at Fit Honey. It went out at Fit Honey. I wish I had it in front of me. Repeat, repeat it again, Kim, and also type it in the chat box. Your Instagram handle at Fit oh, Honey. Okay. Because uh, uh, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty. Right now. Okay, so we'll get. I'll. I'll repeat it. But I repeat it. Six. So say it one more time. We can hear you now. F I T H U N N Y three four five six. Fit Honey at three four five six. Follow her on Instagram. Add her as a friend. Connect. Let her know if you have any questions for her. Also, Kimberly. Tell us about your beat face and this beautiful makeup. She's being modest. She's not giving us all the beats. <laughs> Um, I actually got into makeup about a year and a half ago, um, in the because I went to the Met counter one time and I didn't like how they did my makeup, so I said I'm gonna try and do this and um, started following some amazing makeup artists on Instagram, YouTube, and uh, it kind of blossomed into something beautiful. I just did a wedding yesterday, um, did seven beautiful faces. And, um, yeah, I'm loving it. I, and I did my fabulous cousin, Sade. I did her photo shoot. I was going to mention that. If you see any other pictures on Instagram, at Sade Yabrago, on Twitter or Instagram, and even on Facebook, Kimberly has done all the faces for that. I would not look as amazing as I did if it wasn't for her. This is what happens when I do my makeup. That's what happens when she does my makeup. <laughs> so you can see the difference. So you can find her. What's your Twitter handle for your uh, makeup? It's about face. Yeah, about a b o number eight c e. Um, that's my other page on Instagram. Insta about face, about f eight number c e. Thank you, Miss Williams. Now, Marvin, how can we keep in contact with you, Doctor Carr, and all the things Thank that you. you got going on? Well, you can follow me on the gram, um, Doctor Bill Gates underscore m c. Dr. Bill Gates underscore MC. Um, and again, if you have any questions out there about um, getting into graduate school, about finishing undergraduate, about the doctoral process, and about weight loss, and about um, living a holistic, um, healthy, holistic lifestyle, you can email me um, at M A C A R, the number four, at morgan.edu. All right, M A C A R. C A R four at Morgan.edu and I will happily respond to you. Awesome. I'm so excited. And let me give you a little caveat. When when Dr. Carr graduates, that email address may not be working. So make sure you get in contact with him immediately. Not now, but right now. So please get in contact with Dr. Carr. Thank you so much, Marvin. Shanika, how can we get in contact with you? Um well, I'm not a huge Instagram person, but I do post um, every now and then. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'll put it in the chat box. Um, you can follow me um, at it's, I-T-S underscore M-E underscore Shanika, S-H-E-N-E-I-C-A. Um, and if you have any questions for me, um, I'm always right next to my email. So feel free to email me with any questions you have about um, getting in shape, or as Marvin said about graduate school, and I will be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much. And eventually, we will be doing some graduate school specific webinars because I am a college and career coach, so I definitely will be doing more of that. So, thank you so much.